Let's do one more with the patty paper and the equivalent fraction and the skip counting, and then after that we will step away from the trace, the patty paper. So two thirds or three fourths, which one is greater? So step one, let's trace the two thirds. Okay, and then three fourths. Now from this process, we can see three fourths is more. We know that from pictures, but remember we're trying to step away from pictures and visually understand why we skip count and find a common denominator. So let's go through and see if we can find something they have in common. So when I move the thirds down to the fourths, I don't see it matching up. I don't find an equivalent fraction. When I move the thirds to the fifths, I don't see an equivalent fraction. Fourths don't match up with fifths either. It's short just a little bit. Oh, but look, thirds work on sixths. Three sixths, or sorry, four sixths, one, two, three, four sixths is equivalent to two thirds. But unfortunately, the fourths don't work. See, here's five sixths, but the fourth is falling short. Let's try eighths. Thirds does not work. The fourths work. Six eighths is equivalent to three fourths. How about tenths? The thirds does not work. Neither does the fourths. How about twelfths? Well, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight twelfths is equivalent to two thirds. And. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 twelfths is equivalent to 3 fourths. So twelfths is probably going to be our common denominator. Okay, so when we had the twelfths, we said 8 twelfths is equivalent to 2 thirds. And then when we had the 3 fourths, we said 9 twelfths is equivalent to 3 fourths. Now it's so much easier to compare. 9 twelfths is greater than 8 twelfths. So that's how you would write it. Okay, so you would take the denominator and skip count. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Notice they both have 12 in common, which means I can cut these into 12s. And so now, 8 twelfths compared to 9 twelfths, this is greater. Okay, I want you to press pause after I give directions. I want you to find the equivalent fraction for 4, 6, and 7 twelfths using the common denominator method that I showed you earlier, and then figure out which one is more. Okay, so my first step is skip count by sixes, 6, 12, 18, 24, 32. Skip count by 12s. 12, 24, 36, 48. So I'm looking at this and I notice they both have 12 in common. They also have 24. Really and truly you can use both. It doesn't matter. I always like to just use the closest because then the multiplication process steps are easier. So I'm going to set both of them equal to 12. Now this one, I don't have to do anything because this happens to be the same. But this one, it's times 2. If you don't know what 6 times what equals 12, you can always go back to your list and be like, well, 6 times 1 is 6, so then second at line is 12, and so times 2. So 4, 6 is equivalent to 8 twelfths, and 7 twelfths is 7 twelfths. 8 twelfths is more than 7 twelfths, therefore that one's bigger. Here's another one. I want you to do the same thing. Press pause and then press play when you're ready. Okay, step one, you want to skip count. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. 6, 12, 18, 24, 32, 40. 
And notice that they both have 24 in common. This is times 3 because it's third in line. This is times 4 because it's fourth in line. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 9 24 and 20 24 20 24 is larger, so 5 6 is larger. Okay, now I want you to do these all separately and then press, um, press play when you are ready to check. The first one, the common denominator they share is, uh, the common multiple that they share is 24. So the new fraction, equivalent fraction set to 24 is 10 24 and 9 24 and 10 24 is greater than 9 24 therefore 5 12 is greater than 3 8 second one the common multiple they share is 18 so 5 6 is 15 18 9 18 is still 9 18 15 18 is greater than 9 18 therefore 5 6 is greater than 9 18 this next one I purposely put on to um, make sure you're aware that sometimes they can also be equal so they both share 20 as their common multiple. So 7 tenths is equivalent to 14 twentieths. 14 twentieths is 14 twentieths. These are actually both equal, therefore these are equal. Another example, these are both equivalent. So these are both equivalent. So I hope you have a better understanding on how to find equivalent, uh, how to compare uh, fractions with different denominators. Okay, so now that you understand how to compare fractions, I want to show some arithmetic you can use. So if you look, this is what you would do to find the common multiple that they share. In this situation, it would be 24. And then you would have to rewrite this and set it up equal to 24. This is nothing new. Well, there is a shortcut. You could just take the two denominators and multiply them by each other. So what's 8 times 3 or 3 times 8? It equals 24. And so you know that can be a possible common multiple. Because I did 8 times 3 equals 24 and 3 times 8 equals 24, you know it's a guaranteed common multiple. You don't have to list them out. This works. Uh, the only problem is that sometimes your number might be much higher than expected. There are fractions, like some math problems out there, where they ask you to compare, and there's a much simpler, smaller multiple to find it, but, you know, it just kind of depends what works best for you. Um, I can show you another example where when you multiply it, you will get a different number here versus listing out the multiples, but you can still solve the problem. As long as it's a common multiple, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this one. So since I did times 3 here, I do times 3 here. So it would be 12 24 times 8 here, so times 8 here, so that would be 16 24 So therefore, that would be larger. Okay, so here's an example that I was talking about. So you can list the multiples and you find out that they both have 8 in common. Or you could do the trick that I showed you. You can just do 8 times 4, which equals 32, and set them up to 32. You will still get the same correct answer both ways. Just one is a little bit higher multiplication. But if you think about it, you know you did 8 times 4 equals 32. So you know that's going to be times 4, and so if you reverse it, 4 times 8 equals 32, it, it, works, both, it works the same way. So 28 30 halves is more than, or 30 tooths, I don't know. 28 30 tooths is more than um, 24 30 seconds. Um, so 7 eighths is greater than 3 fourths, but if I did it this way, this is times 2, this is times 2. 6 eighths compared to 7 eighths, 7 eighths is more than 3 fourths. I still got the same answer. It's just a trick out there if you, you know, sometimes the multiplication, the finding the common multiple does take time. It's a long list sometimes and, you know, you just, you know, you just want to solve it and get done. This works just as well.